You definitely will. Everyone knows them too. The internet and social media are full of so-called life hacks where you think if that actually works, then it's really a cool thing. And sometimes you wonder, can something like that really work in practice? And that's exactly what we're going to try out today with Alpine Styrofoam, which supposedly you can use to do some useful things. You pretty much always have styrofoam waste at home from some kind of packaging. I have especially a lot of it because I often use it to build molds for my concrete projects. Up until now, I've always thrown away the small leftover pieces, but if you believe the claims, that's supposed to be a big mistake. So supposedly, you can easily make a super glue out of styrofoam that can bond all kinds of materials. And that's what we're going to try out first. First, we need to make the super glue. For that, all we need is acetone, which is a solvent that can dissolve styrofoam. And now you just put the styrofoam scraps in there. The styrofoam, which by the way consists of more than 90% air, dissolves immediately. By the way, this is the original speed, so no time lapse. Melting the styrofoam worked pretty well so far. And honestly, I didn't really expect it to react like that. By the way, I also tried the whole thing with Styrodur. It didn't dissolve quite as easily, but it still worked. This is supposed to be the super glue that supposedly can bond all materials. Let's see how it goes. Let's start with the simplest option, which is cardboard. Honestly, it doesn't spread on very nicely. It's pretty thick, I have to say. Well, that's not exactly ideal, but let's see what it actually sticks to. Hold on everyone, quick pause in the experiment. I think I dissolved too much styrofoam. As a result, the consistency is too viscous. So I did it again, this time with much less. And yes, now the consistency is much better and actually looks like real glue. Now it's also much easier to apply and looks a lot more like glue. So. Next, we'll continue with natural stone. Let's see if that works too. All right, everyone, I'm pretty much done with my gluing experiments. Let me show you what I've done. I've glued metal to metal, paper to paper, wood to wood, stone to stone, and then wood to metal, plastic and stone. We're going to let the whole thing harden now. And then I'm curious to see how strong the glued joints are. Let's move on to the second test. Apparently, with this material, we should also be able to seal holes in plastic so they're waterproof. I'm curious about that too. In our next experiment, we'll move on to sealing stone surfaces. That should work as well, natural stone and concrete. And that's actually what interests me the most right now. Let's give it a try. So this stuff seems to be able to do everything. Now let's move on to our final test. Supposedly, we should also be able to make colored wood varnish with the glue. And for that, you just need to add a few color pigments. And we'll test that as well since we're at it. All right, folks, I'm back. Now we're going to test what our glue and our varnish can do. I'm really curious to see the results. I brought everything inside overnight because it's not really warm in the workshop at the moment. And I've waited about 16 hours now. I think that should be enough time for both the glue and the varnish. What do you think? We'll see in a moment. I'd say let's start right away with the glue joints, beginning with the paper. Well, at least it's not falling off.
the bond is actually pretty strong, solid. As you can see, you can't separate the underside. It's still sticking firmly. So yes, it works. But let's be honest, it would have been pretty embarrassing if it hadn't worked with paper. So that wasn't really a challenge yet, but let's keep going. Next up, we have the wood. So at first glance, it's stable. Nope, I can't get this apart. We'll need to bring out the big guns for this. Nope. No, for this we need heavy artillery. No, really. Nothing's budging here. So far I have to say I'm really positively surprised. Let's see if it stays that way, because now we're moving on to a really tough connection. Stone to stone. Here too. But with some shearing force you can... Yeah, well, with enough shearing force I managed to get it apart, but it wasn't easy. Let's continue with metal on metal. That's not an easy bond either. You usually need some pretty good adhesives for that. We'll see. Yeah. So that was no problem. The bond didn't really hold. But yeah, okay. And now we come to our last adhesive bond. These are the different variations we glue together. Yeah, metal with wood. Yeah, that didn't really hold well either. Then here, plastic with wood. That didn't hold well either. And here, stone and wood. Yeah. Yeah. No, you can't get that off like this. One last try. That's rock solid. Honestly, I'm a bit surprised by the result. Now I'm wondering why the metal and the plastic didn't stick better to the wood as well. My first guess would be that the stone and the wood were able to absorb the glue, which resulted in a better bond, whereas the plastic and the metal can't absorb the glue. Well, could be. Maybe one of you knows what the reason could have been. If you know something, or if you have a theory, feel free to write it down in the comments below. I'd really be interested to know. We're done with the glue joints for now. So now let's move on to the hole we repaired. And I'm curious about that too. After all, it was five minutes wide. And the best way to test it is with water. Yes, with water, as usual. Well, it's dripping down. So it's definitely not watertight. It didn't drip out the bottom, but rather from the side. But again, you have the problem that the material doesn't really bond with the plastic. Or maybe you would have had to roughen up the plastic a bit around the hole so it would have more grip and the glue would hold better. But yeah, it definitely didn't work the way it was shown in the life hack. That's a shame. Next, we'll continue with sealing the surface of the stones. That's also an interesting topic, so let's take a look at the stones first. You can clearly see that the stones have become a bit darker due to the treatment. The natural stone here more so than the concrete stone. And now we'll test the protective effect. We'll start again with the natural stone. Let's pour a little water over it. So... And as you can see here on the sealed surface, the water beads up. It sits on the surface here and where it wasn't sealed, the stone absorbs the water so it turns completely dark. But here, the water stays on the surface. I assume it will look similar with the concrete. Yes, but you can see it even more clearly there. So that's identical. Nothing stays on it. So nothing penetrates the surface. The water runs off. Yeah, pretty cool. 
As for how it holds up to mechanical stress, I honestly don't know right now. But you could always test that as well. No, it still looks pretty much completely sealed, I think. Lastly, I have our colored varnish for wood. I'm not exactly sure what you could test with that. I'll just go ahead and do it too. Wet. And here too, you can see that the moisture stays on the wood and doesn't penetrate it. I don't know what else we could test. Yeah, my conclusion regarding the test and the material, I have to say, it's surprisingly positive. I honestly didn't expect that. Even though not everything worked out the way it was shown in this life hack scan, I have to say, for the most part, it actually did work. Especially the adhesive bond between the stone and the wood and the wood itself. That was rock solid. I couldn't separate them. I didn't expect that either. And the ceiling as well. Overall, it actually wasn't bad at all. So it worked. Even though I personally probably wouldn't use it for ceiling concrete, it did work the way it was shown in this life hack. And that's exactly what we tested. So that's it for today. I hope it was a bit interesting for you again, a bit exciting, and that you enjoyed the video. If so, feel free to give it a thumbs up. Then we'll see each other again soon for new projects or maybe even some tests. Let's see what's coming up next. Until then, take care. Bye.